What is going on guys, my name is Mehul and welcome to your probably 9th Angular 2 tutorial. I don't remember numbers very well. So in this tutorial we'll be looking at how to add some CSS to your components. And uh, obviously you won't take a site like this live on internet. You don't want to see the users see just a static HTML page, kind of. So we'll be adding some styles to this page to modify it a little bit but I'll be just showing you how to add styles you can just do the basic styling yourself so what I'll make use of is styles property and I would write some styles inside an array well I don't know why they put that inside an array when they can actually have a string literal right here so what I'm gonna do is Let's just say if I want to style this h1 tag somehow. So I'm going to say h1 text align center and p tag as um, let's just say background black color white. Why not? Uh, let's just take a look in the browser. As you can see, the styles are applied. But if you take a closer look in the DOM tree, you can see that some of the attributes have been added by Angular automatically. So just keep a look at these ng ghost and ng content things right there. So if I kind of just get rid of this styles at all and then again save my file. You can see that there are no such attributes like ng ghost and ng content. So why the heck in the world would Angular add these attributes when I am styling um, these tags? Well, consider this. Let's just say I don't have h1 tag not only in this component but I also have that in my movies component. So let's just say I have something like top movies trending well now let's just reload well as you can see both of these are h1 but actually what happens is that my styles are only applied to this this h1 and the reason is that because this top movies trending h1 is not a component of my shop so these styles you can say are basically scoped so they are scoped that means that they would be applied only to a particular controller so if you just take a look in the DOM tree you can see that the styles are still in the head but how they are scoped is that angular automatically adds some of the tags to the different components it finds so for example this h1 is styled a text align of center but the only h1s which have been you know assigned this property is the ones which have the attribute ng content erg1 i don't know what that means but that's some sort of mapping that this is my controller number one so this should be styled only this one should be styled and nothing else so that's how basically you include styles and again you can have some styles right here for this controller and uh, similarly you would make use of backticks and you can write like if you have another h1 here yes we have so i can write just like text align right and as you can see that this one and this one are both h1 tags but they don't have anything in common so if you pay close attention you can actually find the pattern in this uh, attribute naming so you can see that this is number one then this is number two M might be that if you have another module with another component that might be number three and then so on and so forth then we have this ng ghost to the root element maybe something like that so you can figure that out and that's how you basically add styles and uh, it is scoped so as you can see and uh, you can actually you know you see that this these two style tags are added um, you know under one another so 
you can actually make use of the shadow dom or basically force the angular 2 to make use of the shadow dom and if you guys don't know what that is then don't worry we'll be probably covering that in the next tutorial and just to give a glimpse of what shadow dom is that uh, it is like if you have ever made use of input type text place placeholder is equal to some text then if you have ever visited this dom tree with i don't know there's some sort of setting right here enable shadow dom uh, i'll just take a look there where that setting is and once you have done that and you take a look here in input type text is placeholder something then you can actually expand that input tag as well so that input tag contains some sort of shadow dom so that's what we refer by shadow dom so we'll be taking a look at that in the next tutorial so yeah so that's all for this one and uh, don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching